Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and welcome to today's reading. We are getting into a little bit more of a forward facing reading. So we're going to look to see what sort of energy is moving this direction. And also we're going to answer that question that I've been getting about whether or not you should reach out. So we're going to go ahead and jump into it. It'll be a general reading for this collective as always. So it won't resonate with everyone and it shouldn't resonate with everyone. But if it does resonate with you, then by all means, um, feel free to go ahead and take a look at some of the other videos. Hit subscribe, hit the like button. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce my decks before I jump into it. So I am going to use as my primary deck uh, Tarot del Toro. This one is uh, really powerful and excellent for just kind of getting to the to the heart of things. And speaking of hearts, this is going to be the Naked Heart Tarot. I'm going to use this one for clarification. And then when I get to the Oracle, which will probably be um, exclusively in the Extended, we'll get to the Spirit Animal Oracle. So I thought this would be a good one to use today. Jumping in, we're going to go ahead and get the energy of this, what's coming. So we're going to go ahead and look at the month of June, knowing though that we want to look closer to the front half of it, really, because we're going to update the energy around mid-month. So looking at what's coming for you during the month of June, and I just dropped it. Let me go ahead and grab that. We have... The King of Blades. Now, the interesting thing is, I don't know if it came up in the reverse or in the upright, but I feel like it needs to sit in the reverse, and I feel like it came in with aspects and elements of both. So in the reverse, it's it's having this feeling of being able to be logical, being able to build a pretty strong strategy, but not really doing it for some reason. So it's the sense of having that skill set. This is not a person who can't think things through, but for some reason they are obscuring parts of it from themselves. We've seen that um, that tendency to kind of keep the, I'm just throwing stuff on the floor all, all over the place. So we've seen that tendency to kind of keep the truth from themselves um, or to do maybe a little bit less of, to, to not have to put put it in the same kind of perspective. So there's a matter of, there's a truth that feels very heavy that they are not taking into consideration, not giving it that appropriate amount of weight. I guess that's what I want to say. Um, it's because they're not wanting to admit something to themselves. So with the Four of Cups, I've got something about, there's really kind of the, the fact that they are disappointed in themselves, but also the fact that they continue to be amazed by the strength of this bond and the fact that it doesn't seem to want to go away. There's a lot more consideration of this bond than they ever thought they were going to have to experience and to do so in a continual way. With the Five of Swords, they are, it's a, it's almost kind of a feeling of giving up, but not in a actual giving it up sort of way. This is much more, I guess it's that feeling of giving up like almost spitefully, like throwing it somewhere, just throwing it off to the side and saying, forget it, I'm out, you know. It's that kind of giving up rather than actually saying, I release my attachment to this, which is the kind of giving up that is probably needed in this situation. And in several of the situations where your person finds themselves, and unless I miss my guess, this is a fairly shared energy, so it's probably something that you can feel in different places across your life as well. A feeling of, ah, oh, you know what, forget it. I just, I give up. I'm not going to do this right now. I need to come back to this later. That is not necessarily a bad plan. However, um, it is also not super productive as far as emotions go. So let's get in here a little bit deeper. I think this Four of Cups is probably pretty significant. We've got some emotions coming through. There's this sense of disappointment, but also this sense of awe and constantly being drawn back into this bond. This is really what's drawing them back in. So this is emotion. It is a sense of strong emotion that is, it's unstoppable sort of emotion, but it also has that feeling of a newness or a new wave of it. If if this is something that is, it has a never ending love sort of feel to it, but it's like a wave of this love. So it comes in waves and there's one that feels like it's happening right now. For them, I don't know if you're going to feel that coming for you as well. 
If you are in your meditations, you may notice their energy hanging around a little more than what it has in the past. What is special here is that they are not the same person as they were before. So their energy may pretty much be the same. I mean, they may have a very similar sort of, you'd, you'd recognize them if they're hanging around you. But it's not this, it doesn't feel the same because they have made some changes. They have grown. Now, the question is, have they grown enough to be able to recognize and utilize this emotion that wants to really well up in them? Because that is a strong sense. And it's not the first time recently here that we've gotten the Ace of Cups and it has come out incredibly strongly. With the Seven of Cups, they know they've got some options as far as what direction they want to go forward, but they aren't sure which way to go. There is definitely sort of a nebulous nature. You see the confusion because um, the, the fog around this giraffe and the seven cups represent the options. It's not necessarily seven options. It is multiple options, though. They have multiple options that they could go in this sort of emotional situation here, especially with this three of swords in the reverse. That's more of an ability to use what they've learned. So there is kind of a strong sense of that, but not necessarily a good idea of which road to go down. And that's one of the things that I see here with the Seven of Cups is I, I just don't know which way to go, you know, and it's, they're not quite sure how to evaluate the options as a result. Now, there is definitely, they don't have enough information truly to evaluate all of these options the way they would want to either. And that's what I see here with the movement of Pentacles. They, they kind of are lacking some of that, which causes them to lack some perspective. There's a sense of them not being able to move forward with something because they lack enough information to properly evaluate this. Or at least, I, I want to say they don't have enough information to evaluate it to their satisfaction. Because this is somebody who feels like they, um, they like to evaluate a little bit more deeply than what they will when they get more mature. So they'll be able to make information or they'll be able to make decisions with less information eventually. And at this point, they don't have enough information to evaluate the situation. Whereas in the future, after they've grown a bit and gotten to a point where they can make decisions with a little bit less information, that may be sufficient. So I'm not saying it's insufficient information to decide how to go to move forward, but they feel that way. However, this is a special moment for them. So it's almost like if they don't move or do anything too out of place, um, they can they have this moment of not feeling anxiety, this moment of being able to feel this emotion. Now, I feel like it locks them into place, so it's not allowing a transformation to occur, but it is enabling a transformation to occur. So they kind of have to stop be locked in place here for a moment, that's going to give them this opportunity to drop some of this anxiety or to view something that they have previously viewed with anxiety. They get to view it without that sense of anxiety for once. And it really changes things for them such that when they do kind of let off the break and allow this change to happen that they're avoiding and I'm not going to complain about them avoiding this change because they need to stand still for a moment in this energy. Um, but if when they finally get to a place where they're starting to move forward, this is a moment where they have, um, this is a card here of divine timing and investment in the self. So with the Seven of Pentacles, I think there's a lot of positivity coming based on the energy that I feel here, but I just feel like they haven't quite made the best of all of it yet. Now with the movement of cups, here's where I still feel like you're hearing from them. This is a communicative energy. And so you may notice, some of you will notice them coming to you in your meditation, becoming a part of your prayer. Their energy sort of intrudes in on it almost before your prayer is finished. Um, and, and that sort of energy, that's very much them feeling comfortable in your space energetically, um, but they aren't comfortable yet. They're still feeling very awkward in that 3D, in that physical space. So let's get some more messages for you as far as what to expect. And remember, this was across the general month that we're looking at. So it's about not quite knowing which direction to go. Might feel a little bit stagnant with them not making a change that we all know they need to make and a transformation that they all need, that we know they need to make. However, um, it may really not be the right time for that transformation. We need to not rush that because there is that 
benefit that they're going to be able to get from not having, not viewing this with anxiety. When they view it without anxiety, it's really going to change things for them. Okay, so now looking into what we expect to happen across the month of June and just, you know, we've got this very engaging, communicative, sometimes it feels like a very vulnerable and charismatic energy that we're seeing. So as this summer gets underway, you know, what do we expect? Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the winter where there's that there's that love, love card again. The Ace of Goblets is that same energy as this Ace of Cups over here. And it is truly overflowing sense of emotion. There's a lot there. So the thing is, they have had a history of getting very concerned and starting to maybe do some running away type behavior when things get intense. So that's what I worry about because there's a sense of intensity. This does not do anything to slow it down. That is the Queen of Wands, and that's a feeling of passion. It adds to the intensity. So you have passion and emotion, and that's what we're expecting in the month of June. I'll be interested to clarify this and see how it plays out as far as actions and behaviors. Because if you've got somebody who's reaching out and feeling a little bit more vulnerable in this space, then it is... First off, I am curious about whether it makes sense for you to reach out because some of you have asked that. Um, secondly, if it's if it's manifesting in this type of passion and this type of emotion, it may be just super important that you know what it is that you want before you go into this conversation, which may sound super obvious to some of you, but I guarantee there are a few of you out there that realize that things will get much more complicated if this starts to move forward. And so for those of you who are in that place, you're just kind of being warned, think about this um, before you make any decision to reach out. So already the answer about reaching out, it's not truly a solid, definite yes or no, because sometimes I don't know that we've ever really gotten a solid, definite yes, but we have definitely gotten no. We have gotten, hey, this is a bad time. You probably want to avoid this energy that this person has right now. So if you're not in communication, go ahead and let it stay that way. Um, I'm not seeing anything like that here. I'm, I'm getting much more of an ambivalent answer, but one of the pieces that wants to come through very strongly is you would do so at some risk. And the risk has to do with the, your own specific situation. So if both of you are in a marriage, this could push something forward that says you're both now going to be forced to deal with those third party energies a little bit more strongly. Um, with Nine of Swords, we see the reintroduction, the periodic reintroduction of some of that anxiety. Um, but the anxiety playing on top of the passion and the emotion is not necessarily a particularly good look. So I would tread carefully and slowly in this kind of environment. But that doesn't mean not moving forward. It means being prepared for what may come. So if you do reach out to this person, you be prepared for the fact that it may be a little bit more intense and they may be a little different than what you remember, even if it's not been all that long. Um, there is a great deal of healing that has not yet occurred that will be exposed during the month of June. That's one of the things I thought I was feeling earlier. I'm like, mm, I feel like we're going to see the edges of healing here during this month. And I know that's one of those things that I sometimes will come out and say, but this is the sort of card that really makes me say it. We have a five of cups. It's regret. And this is about living in that regret. So it's a matter of um, being reminded that there is something to be addressed. So I'll give you an example. Um, one of you wrote me a note and was talking about how you saw a picture that not just, you know, shows a time, but reminded you of something that you did that you weren't super proud of. And so it was a road to forgiveness. It was a matter of um, the person said, I just kept this picture open and periodically would go back and look at it. And it got less and less painful as I looked at it because I was doing more accepting of, yes, okay, this happened. I am not necessarily super pleased with some of the circumstances that show up in this picture. And it's totally not a scary looking picture, by the way. Like if you look at it, I, I did get to see the picture. It, you wouldn't notice what is really driving this person mad when they look at it, you know. But that madness really starts to decrease because over time they're saying, you know what, I'm looking at this. I'm getting an idea of where the healing needs, needs to take place. And instead of just deleting the picture and hiding it, 
working through it. And so that's a sense of kind of what I feel with this Five of Cups. So there is a regret, but there's some ability to use this as a benefit, so I, an ability to use it as a tool. There's also a better sense of what is in balance and what is not. Less threat to the living environment. So in June, we've got some changes that are happening for people, but they are not as active changes to people's living environments within the month of June. So it may be you're going to move in July, or it may be that something is shifting and your job is changing. There's less of that happening in the month of June. I won't say none because I do still feel that energy of change here, but it isn't as clear and present as maybe some of what we saw in May and some of what I feel like is still kind of out there a little bit, but it's so nebulous, it's hard to call. Um, with the Eight of Pentacles, there is a sense of mastery, working on something, putting in the time. So it what this may translate to for you is, it could go a couple of ways, or it could go both of these ways, but it has to do with trying something new. Here's the trying something new. Trying something new and getting better at it, or taking a new approach to something and getting better at it. There's something about going toward a sense of mastery. This is not necessarily self-mastery. It could be a lot of times when I see the Eight of Pentacles for this collective, I get a sense of self-mastery out of it. But this is mastery of something else. It can be a mastery of a skill. It can other, the other thing I was going to tell you is it can be um, the two of you talking until you start to get right with the type of tone and the type of vibe that you want to have. But what's really special here is that sense of trying something new. That is... Um, what differentiates this energy from where we might have seen it in the past. For the month of June, we've got new opportunity coming that it seems like it makes sense to take hold of. And it, it is very much related. It, you'll identify it this way. So it's very much related by to something that has been missed in the past. So there's this opportunity to kind of reclaim something. That's part of where I feel the conversation starts to take place. They're feeling some old familiar kind of way that you wouldn't have any reason to, to think that. So it's a dream or a fantasy they had that put them in this frame of mind, not something that happened with you where you would understand why they seem to all of a sudden be behaving and feeling a little differently to you. Um, they are feeling a little differently, but they're feeling like they've lost some ground. They've got some missed opportunity. That's what's inspiring them to come back and try something new. For those who are able to reach out and contact you, because some of them are going to need to stay in that realm of fantasy and dreams, really. There's a feeling of, again, having not fulfilled some sort of prerequisites uh, prerequisites that would have been necessary before this relationship should be reapproached um, in their book. So this isn't necessarily something you said. It's something that they determined for themselves. They needed to get to a certain place. They realized they haven't gotten there and they're kind of stopping themselves from getting there with this ace of swords so we talked a little bit earlier about kind of keeping that truth from themselves there is still this tendency for them to keep this truth from for them from themselves um, but they know they're doing it so the ace of swords actually is that feeling of keeping the truth from themselves the judgment card is their awareness of it their awareness of the situation and the fact that it doesn't pass judgment with them it doesn't uh, it's not satisfactory. So they are sitting in a place where they have a choice to either bury themselves in the energy of fantasy or go make it real. That is a choice that your person is taking during the month of June or making during the month of June. And they are not necessarily super pleased with some of what they're seeing there. I am again reminded of this Four of Cups here that feels like both the disappointment that they have in themselves and it's like this disappointment for not allowing themselves to truly feel um, but also this disappointment for handling the situation in a way that they think is more detrimental than positive and so there's definitely a sense of wanting to make up for that missed opportunity and wanting to make up for some lost ground um, be careful with this, though, because it feels like they're, and I'm curious to see what their actions are. So we'll look at that when we get into the extended, um, what kinds of actions you can expect across the month of June. But what I'm feeling here is a little bit of the return of that narcissistic energy that we were seeing a little bit ago, where they may kind of come in and be very, very, very charismatic, um, like we were 
we've been seeing that rise in that charismatic energy. Um, it, if that is part of this cycle that they're having to redo that we've heard about, then this may not be um, moving toward a final union for the two of you. It may instead be heading toward another separation. So, um, and if not a formal physical separation, it could be um, more of an emotional separation, which is what you'll see in some cases. So let's get in a little bit more to what your recommendations are. And like I said, when we get into the extended, um, we will look to see a little bit more of what kinds of behaviors you can expect from them. Because of course, the actions will vary by the individual situations, but we'll see what kind of behaviors and what is maybe driving some of those behaviors. Although we already know that intense emotion and that intense, that intense um, just drive, that is like a physical passion type drive. Um, but they come right up against this wall here. And remember, this is a person who's approaching a tower and as they approach that tower, you start to see them retract a little bit emotionally, but you may not see them retract physically just yet. Those two things may happen at different rates. So we'll look into it when we get into the extended. The link is down below in the description for the video, so you might have to open it up a little bit more to see more of that. Um, but before we get into it, we're going to get into the portion of the reading that I know some of you exclusively watch this third portion, um, who are basically done looking at what's happening with your person and you're looking to just kind of go it alone and think about, well, what are those areas of focus for me at this time? Because it's true that they have really opened up these areas of focus in you um, and you could you can just move forward with those fairly decisively there's a decisive energy here in the month of june um, you can move forward with those without any help from them so even if they're over here kind of working through their own pieces and you are not looking to interact with them or disturb their their growth in any way there is still this feeling that you are going to be working through some things during the month of June. So we have the Queen of Swords, um, Blades, I guess it's Blades in this deck. Queen of Blades, which is that decisiveness and a need for that decisiveness this month. Seven of Chalices, which is a very strong sense of it's time for you to go out and make some decisions. So you might feel a little bit like this giraffe over here on the Seven of Cups. It's the same energy. Um, but you might be feeling a little bit of that sense of fog and not being sure which way to go. What you have that your person doesn't yet have is an ability to make decisions with less information. So you are not too afraid to be able to move forward, even though there may be some nebulous nature in these options that you have going forward. You have more of a capacity to make a decision there that you know you'll be able to roll with it as you learn the pieces that maybe you don't yet know. What you're going to be fighting, though, is a feeling of um, that's, that imposter syndrome kind of feeling. So you'll be fighting it, but I don't feel like it holds you back very much. You just may notice pieces of it that you had forgotten still existed. So it's a little bit of an opportunity for you to figure out where some of your healing has ended or the ending of some of your healing. So like what we see with this four of swords here, where I sometimes see that come out and I get this feeling of, oh, okay, so this is exposing what healing hasn't been done. It's being able to see the edges of it because you've been, let's say, working on that fear of abandonment, but you aren't all the way there yet. Um, so we have the moon card in the reverse. That is the card of making decisions with less information right there. That's it. Now, you are also kind of being plagued by this this situation with this person. Um, it feels like a situation with this person that is throwing you kind of off kilter a little bit, a little bit off balance, but you're doing incredibly well with it. So being able to make a decision with less information because you don't feel like you're going to have to backtrack even if you end up having to change something about your decision, you're just going to be able to change midair and you're confident about that. Um, so watch for that decision to come up and when it happens and you think, well, I don't know, I can just do this and if I need to change, then I'll change later. Remember that's an option because that's going to shorten your process and it's going to shorten it in what turns out to be a relatively comfortable way. Um, with the Four of Cups here, you've got that disappointment um, and that feeling of why is this relationship still dragging on me even though I'm focusing on other things? And, you know, and I know some of you are focusing on the other things because we really talked about 
um, some of those goals that came through for the collective, a lot of you are into self-care and many of you are learning to redirect some of your energy to encompass that broader range. This is that recognition of how difficult that is. And when you try to turn your energy away from this person, you may still be feeling a fair amount of it. Um, especially keep in mind that they are putting it toward you. It isn't just you going and, and seeking it out yourself, although there may be some degree of that as well. Um, you're going to notice a reduction in some of your defenses. And that reduction in some of your defenses is going to yield a, things going better for you. You are absolutely, the only thing that wants to come out for me here is make sure you use your powers for good. Or maybe use whatever it is that comes out of this that you're especially good at, you're especially capable of doing. Make sure that you're doing good things with what you're capable of because you have a lot of power. You wield a lot of power in this situation, whatever this is, because I don't think that this is necessarily um, your person. I feel like this is one of those new opportunities coming out around which it feels like there is that soulmate sort of connection. So watch when you get in there for people that you may run across that could um, be somebody that really means a lot to you. And remember that soulmates come in multiple forms. These are not all necessarily going to be um, the type of soulmate that you would want to date or be with. Some of them could be someone who means a lot to you and you understand. That's the definition that we're going with here. You are likely to... Um, run across people in this energy that you really resonate with and you're recognizing that resonance. That's the difference. It isn't that you don't run across people that would resonate with you. It's sometimes you're not necessarily tuned properly to really pick it up. So with the three of cups here in the reverse, there is a need for you to address something that's happening in your life outside of this situation with this person. So something is out of balance. It could be something that's happening in your home life or it could be a work type situation, but there's something out of balance that needs to be put into balance. Um, I think the tip of this is going to be with that king of discs there. Um, the tip of it is that imposter syndrome. So it's going to be about, okay, let's go ahead and get that self-worth um, back into a good place. And the thing is, you will quickly be able to diagnose the imbalance. You will quickly be able to say this is about self-worth. Um, and then you will be able to not make the not go that direction you'll be able to talk yourself out of it so kind of a cognitive therapy based approach but it'll be you recognizing that the weakness is not a real one you know and here we are with the strength card so the strength card as we know never happens in a vacuum this is a card where you are you are honestly being given an opportunity to see what all is possible for you with that strength card, the way that feels. You're being given that opportunity to see what's possible for you, and then you it's being put within your reach so that you can just reach out and grab it. And it may be kind of grabbing for what constitutes a first step, but it's still pretty important and significant um, feeling for you as you go forward. So we know there are changes coming to you. We saw that in um, yesterday's reading. So that was kind of the forward facing portion of that reading. Looks like some of those changes then um, look like they're coming during the month of June. And, and of course, we know some of those changes could already have gotten started during the tail end of May. They may kind of go into July a little bit, but it is heart, the heart of it is in the month of June. And remember, we were kind of focusing more on that first half. So of course, we'll take in the whole month, but we're more focused on that first half because we know that the second half, we're going to um, go in there and refresh the energy. So for the energy of this person, this relationship, there's a lot of this passion, a lot of emotion coming out, and a lot of an ability to work through it and get themselves into some real trouble. That's one thing I will say. But there is this tendency for them to judge themselves, to view um, to view themselves a little bit harshly, and it actually functions not to correct them as they would hope that it would. It functions more to slow them down and make them have to go into that thinking cave, which again is not necessarily a bad thing, but 
um, it's something to be considered. And when they go into that thinking cave because of the tower experience that happens, the emotionally tumultuous experience that happens, you are encouraged to um, let them go and encourage them in the finding of those. That, that's going to be them defining their values. Now, again, the person who asked or the people who asked about whether or not you should communicate, you can if you want to. Um, but be very prepared for whatever might come back here. This could be something that's a little on the intense side and it could kind of set you back a little bit in your emotions. So just be aware of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and transition now into that, um, into that extended reading and we'll look at some of what is maybe expected from this person, the types of actions and behaviors you might see coming from them. Um, thank you so much for being here with me. That extended, the link is down below if you want to join me there. Otherwise, I will see you again in the next reading.